Hey everyone, welcome to part 2 of the first flight of the day video series utilizing the Airfoil Labs King Air 350. Today we will go over the engine run-up items step by step using the manufacturer's checklist. Please reference my video on June 1st of 2020 demonstrating these checks in the real airplane. First up is the overspeed governors and rudder boost check. The purpose of this test is to verify that each prop overspeed governor would regulate the prop RPM to 1768 if the primary governor failed. The primary governor limits prop RPM speed to 1700, which is the red line on the prop RPM gauges. By moving the test switch to GOV, G -O -V, it is basically tricking the system allowing us to conduct the test at a lower power setting. Rudder boost aids the pilot in the event of an engine failure. It senses torque differential between the two engines. When the torque differential exceeds approximately 30%, rudder boost activation begins. Because it is an automatic system, we are checking that it is working as intended, and if it is not working properly, we need to verify that we can disable the system. Start by verifying the rudder boost switch is in the rudder boost position. Prop levers, full forward. Prop governor test switch, hold to gov. Power levers individually, increase until prop RPM is stabilized between 1520 and 1610. So we'll start with the right side. You can see the prop RPM increase. It'll catch around 1600, which indicates the overspeed governor is working as intended. Continue to increase until rudder movement is noted. So since I'm moving the right power lever up, I should see the right rudder pedal move forward. I do see a little movement down there. It is a little more pronounced than the real airplane. That indicates that the rudder boost is working as intended. As we increase the power, you also need to observe the ITT and torque limits. Autopilot trim disconnect depress the first level in release. This will ensure that we can deactivate the rudder boost if needed. However, the first and second levels are not modeled accurately, so we'll skip this step. Power lever back to idle. Next, repeat steps for the opposite engine. All right, the left power lever is coming up. You can see the prop RPM stabilize between 1520 and 1610. We'll continue to increase the power. Looking for the left rudder pedal to move forward while observing the ITT and torque limits. Rudder boost looks good. Next, we would depress the autopilot trim disconnect to the first level to ensure that we can disconnect the rudder boost and then power lever back to idle. and prop governor over speed, test switch, release. Next is the low pitch stops and primary governors check. Prop levers, full forward. Low pitch stop switch, hold to ground idle. Verify the left and right prop pitch lights are illuminated. Power levers, set 1500 RPM. Prop levers cycle to low, then high RPM, but avoiding the feather region. Verifying prop RPM decreases, and then increases. Low pitch stop switch release. Verify the left and right prop pitch lights are extinguished. And the prop RPM has stabilized between 1150 and 1250. You can see it slowly decrease. It's a little slower than the real airplane, but it is stabilizing right around 1250. Next up is the auto feather check. Auto feather switch hold to test. Power levers, approximately 22% torque, and that's a minimum 22%. It doesn't need to be exact. Verify the left and right auto feather lights are illuminated. 
power levers retard individually. So we'll start with the left side. At approximately 17% torque, the opposite enunciator should extinguish. There's 17. The right side light has extinguished. And at 10%, both lights will extinguish as the prop begins to feather. You can see it bouncing right there. It's feathering, unfeathering, feathering, unfeathering. That's a good check. We'll bring the power levers back up. I see both auto feather lights. And we'll do the right side. 17%, left side extinguishes. 10%, both lights out. And the prop is feathering, unfeathering. That's a good check. Bring the power lever back up. Should see both auto feather lights on. And now we'll move the power levers to idle. Both left and right auto feather lights should extinguish, which they did, and the other prop feathers. Auto feather switch now release. And the last check is the engine anti-ice, with the system initially on. We will start by moving the engine anti-ice actuators to standby. Then the engine anti-ice switches to off. Verify the left and right engine anti-ice lights are extinguished. Engine anti-ice actuators back to main. And last, the engine anti-ice switches back on. Verify the left and right engine anti-ice lights are illuminated. This completes the aircraft systems and engine run-up checks in the Airfoil Labs King Air 350. Please leave any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching.